Coordinate Systems. This entire video is hopefully review, so it will be somewhat brief. We will talk about the coordinate systems and the unit vectors that we'll utilize in each of the coordinate systems. And then we'll briefly summarize how to convert between the different coordinate systems. Coordinate systems and unit vectors. Cartesian coordinates. This is X, Y, Z. This is probably what you've done 90% of the time throughout high school, throughout your earlier courses, and it's very intuitive. So in this case, we are locating a point somewhere in space with the coordinates X, Y, Z. And we can put these together and even write it as a vector in Cartesian coordinates. And so the X value is the distance in the X direction to locate that point. And the Y value is the distance along the Y axis from the origin to get to the point. And then the Z, the same thing, the distance off of the origin to get to that point. And if we add those three lengths together, taking into account their directions, we locate that point. Now, the values of X, Y, and Z can be anything from minus infinity all the way up to positive infinity. And the last thing we'll talk about is the unit vectors. We need unit vectors that point in the X, Y, and Z directions. And that's what I'm showing here as the blue arrows. So unit vectors, they have a magnitude of one. And of course, the unit vector in the X direction points in a direction parallel to X. Unit vector in the Y direction points parallel to Y axis. And the unit vector Z is parallel to the Z axis. On to cylindrical coordinates. Here we're locating a point with three variables, rho, phi, and z. In this case, the rho is really the radius off of the z axis to get to our point. The angle phi is the angle off of the x axis that gets to our point. And then Z is the distance upward from the origin that gets to our point. And so we can still locate a point anywhere throughout X, Y, Z, the original Cartesian coordinates, anywhere throughout three-dimensional space. Now, the value of rho, while in principle, we could let it be a negative number from minus infinity to positive infinity, we'll keep this to go from zero to positive infinity. So it's always in a positive direction direction off of the Z axis. And then we might ask, well, what if it's a negative direction? Well, in fact, we'll keep that positive. We'll just let phi wrap around to the other side of the Z axis to locate points on the other side. So phi will go from zero to two pi. So that is, that's all the way around in the circle. And Z is still minus infinity to positive infinity. The Z in cylindrical coordinates is the exact same thing as the Z from Cartesian coordinates. We also have unit vectors. We have the same unit vector Z pointing in a direction parallel to the Z axis. Our unit vector A rho, now this is going to change depending on our position. It's always pointing outward from the Z axis. And then we have our unit vector A phi this also changes with position, and it's pointing tangential to this curve that's located at a distance rho out from the z axis and at this angle phi. So it's in a direction tangential to that. So as we move our point, our a rho and a phi unit vectors actually change direction. The last coordinate system that we will discuss is spherical coordinates. Here we're locating a point using the variables r, theta, and phi. So one distance and two angles. So r is the distance from the origin to the point. Think of that as the radius of the sphere. Our angle theta is the angle off of the z axis. And then our angle phi is the same phi that we'll use in cylindrical coordinates. It's the angle off of the x-axis to locate our point. So we can locate a vector point with r, theta, and phi in spherical coordinates. 
let's think about the values. Our radius is going from zero to infinity. And we might think, well, why not negative numbers here? Well, the radius will always be a positive number. And if we need a radius in the other direction, we'll do that with the angle theta off of the Z axis. And we'll come down and get to what is essentially negative values of R. The angle theta will limit from zero to pi. So theta will only go from the positive z axis down to the negative z axis. It's not going to wrap around behind. And we might think, well, what if we need angles of theta over there? We'll get to those with angles of phi because phi is going to go from zero all the way to two pi. This phi, just like cylindrical coordinates, will go all the way around so we can access the other side of our coordinates through phi. So by convention, we're limiting the values of these variables this way. We can also talk about our unit vectors. Here, the directions of all three unit vectors change depending on the location of our point. The unit vector in the direction of R is always outward from the origin. So it's along this line connecting the origin to our point and pointing outward. Our unit vector theta is in a direction tangential to this curve here that is, extends from the z-axis down to the xy plane passing through the point. And it's in the same direction that's positive for theta, and that's down from the positive z-axis. And then our a phi, this is the same a phi that we talked about in cylindrical coordinates. So it is the, its positive direction is also the same positive direction. Phi is increasing, rotating from the x-axis to the y-axis. So the positive direction for the position of this point is left to right. Conversion between the coordinate systems. There's really two things that we could be converting. We can convert a coordinate or we can convert a vector. And here I'm showing the conversion back and forth between Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates. So if we have a point in Cartesian coordinates and want to calculate the coordinates in cylindrical coordinates, that is this top left set of equations. So this row, this is the radius off of the z-axis, is simply square root of x squared plus y squared. This angle phi off of the x-axis is simply the inverse tangent of y divided by x. And the z-coordinate in cylindrical is the same as the z-coordinate in Cartesian, so z equals z. Now, if we're given the cylindrical coordinates and want to calculate the Cartesian coordinates from that, well, x equals rho times cosine phi, y equals rho times sine phi, and z equals z because z in cylindrical is the same as z in Cartesian. Now, if we're given a vector in Cartesian coordinates, we'll have x, y, z components, and that same vector in cylindrical will have rho, phi, and z coordinates, and we can calculate a vector in cylindrical coordinates from the vector in Cartesian coordinates using this three by three matrix. And we can also think of that as sort of a coordinate transform. And then we can do this the other way around. We can start with a vector rho phi z in cylindrical coordinates and calculate that vector in x, y, z coordinate. Now this three by three matrix looks very similar to the one up here, but there is actually one difference. The negative sign here has jumped up to this upper right sign phi. Otherwise, these two matrices uh, coincidentally are the same thing. Here's how we can convert back and forth between Cartesian and spherical. Now, again, we can convert coordinates or we can convert vectors. So for coordinates, if we're given Cartesian coordinates and would like to calculate the coordinates and spherical coordinates, we use this upper left set of equations. If we're given coordinates in spherical coordinates and want the Cartesian coordinates, we'll use this lower left set of equations. And then on the right is when we're given vectors, this upper right one, if we're given a vector in Cartesian coordinates, we can calculate the equivalent vector in spherical coordinates using this three by three matrix. And then looking at this the other way around, maybe we're given a vector in spherical coordinates and want to calculate the vector in Cartesian coordinates. We have a very similar looking three by three matrix, but it is actually different than the one up here. 
Now, we might ask, what if we're converting between cylindrical and spherical? Well, um, it is possible to derive similar equations from this. They would be a bit more complicated. I think in that case, it's actually easier to convert, for example, from cylindrical to Cartesian than Cartesian to spherical and go through this intermediate step of Cartesian coordinates. So that's how I tend to do it.